Chris Mohan for Boxing Domination here at the, at the Crystal Palace Stadium and I'm joined by Robbie Kennedy, half Nigerian, half Irish. The Zulu Gypsy. The Zulu <laughs> No worries, no worries. No worries. The nightmare. After his win over... The nightmare after his win over Jack Dryper here at the BKB 37. How are you doing, brother? I, I'm feeling good, man. You know what it is? Uh, I took this on like five, six days' notice. I've been training my ass off. You know, I'm in and out of training anyway. I'm always in training camp fighting. You know, I am fought since obviously November. Um, and obviously, I lost that fight in MMA and obviously to come back and obviously get a knockout. You know, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm buzzing, man. I, I can't lie, I'm buzzing. I've been covering bare knuckle sports for the past year and a half and I've never ever seen a fighter after the end of the fight have a clean face. How the hell did you manage to do that? Because we're too pretty to get cuts. You know, I got one cut here many years ago and uh, I, I plan on keeping this pretty face for as long as I can. You know, like I said, I'm in the fight game. I know takes balls to get in there for any man for any man to get in there and just do what he's got to do so uh, you know my my best way is just to hit and not get hit you know obviously I know he caught me there with a, a few shots but you know I was just trying to use my range and just in and out man use my fancy footwork as, as best I can coming in a very short notice is always a problem for the fighter and the fighter in front of you yeah. but what was it like for you I mean like did the court just come through like were you training already I would, like I said, obviously, I want training for bare knuckle, you know. Obviously, I've been working on my wrestling, my grappling. I'll be honest, you know, I, have, I don't even go to box. I don't hardly do any striking classes. That's just, this is just me having the kickboxing uh, experience and the striking experience over the years. I've done kickboxing for about 10, 11 years now. Um, so I've always had that, that high level of striking. Obviously, I just want to get better at MMA and be a complete fighter and be a complete martial artist. And that's what I want to prove, that I will stand and bang with anyone. I'm not afraid to stand and bang with anyone, you know. Uh, if you're getting knocked out, someone's getting knocked out, I'm getting knocked out. I don't care. That's why I, I knew it wasn't going five rounds. I knew in my head, my fights never last. I've got a 100% finish rate, whether it's me or my opponent. A 100% finish rate. You watch any of my MMA fights, every single one's a finish or me getting finished. <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. Every single fighter, before they start fighting, not... Not exactly everyone, but most fighters have a fighter they look up to. For example, myself, when I started boxing, I had Manny Pacquiao and Mike Tyson. With yourself, who was it? Um, I used to watch a lot of Roy Jones Jr. You know, he was one of my idols. Obviously, Mike Tyson as well. I like, I rate Manny Pacquiao. Mayweather a little bit, but, you know, for me, one of my favourite boxers was Roy Jones Jr. You know, he was, a, he was, an, he was an absolute animal. You know, I, I love some of the fighters. You know, he had, you know, Bernard Hopkins, uh, you know, I think Tony Bernard, I think. I, quite, I do apologise if I got that name wrong, but, you know, there was some high-level box. Boxing isn't the same as what it used to be anymore anyway, uh, in my eyes. But, you know, for me, Roy John Jr. was one of my high, high idols that I used to, you know, look to try and be like anyway. And then I'm not going to take too, too much time off you, but in terms of uh, preparing for this fight mentally, what was that, uh, what was that like in, in the mental side? Um, you know, like I said, I've, I've, I've fought all over the world, you know, and um, just being a fighter and being men having a strong mindset, you know, I've had so much going on in my family life. I've had so much drama, you know, in relationships and my exes and my kids. Um, but to just like set that aside and just be focused on this, it's a mental battle. You know, 70% of the fight, it's not even the fight, it's up here, you know, and that's what not a lot of people realize it, you know, yeah, you can be big and whatever, but. 70% of it's here. The rest, yeah, is when you're in there, you know. So, um, yeah, man, I'm used to try that. I am my own worst enemy, in my own words, you know. So I have to battle myself and make sure I'm better than what I was yesterday and the day, and I just keep getting better. And right before we end the interview, is there anything you want to say to the people that came to watch you tonight? Um, well, obviously, I didn't, I didn't really get to sell any tickets, but obviously um, anyone that supported the, the pay-per-view link and got the link, Massively appreciate. I want to shout out all my sponsors, Excess Guard, Mikado, uh, 411, uh, Wolkenite, uh, MMA Reloaded, Eric's Gear, Hard Life Fightwear, Trident Fitness, obviously, where I train AVT, Underhooks, Raw Talent Martial Arts. That's me, you know? So I appreciate everyone that supported me over the years, man. Thank you so much.
And that's an interview wrapped with a half Nigerian, half Irish, Robbie Kennedy.